Hi and welcome to the SEO College. My name is Dan Maynard. I'm the instructor at the SEO College. And today we're going to be doing a site review of the website printermedics.co.uk. First of all, we are going to be focusing on four key areas of SEO that are quite important. First one being, which is fundamental and the building blocks of any SEO campaign is keyword research. The second thing we'll look at is on-page SEO. Third thing we'll look at backlinks. And the fourth thing we're going to look at is the most recent Panda updates. And I'll explain all of those as we move along. So the first thing we want to do is to look at the keyword research. So the first thing I did is I went to a product called SEMrush to take a look at how many keywords you're coming up for in the first two pages of results in Google. And when I put in the printermedics.co.uk, it came back with no keywords. So you don't have any keywords that can be found on the first two pages of Google. The next thing I did is I went to another product that would give me all of the backlinks. That is the links that are pointing back to your website to specific pages with keyword phrases in them. And what I found is that when I look at these statistics and look at anchor text, you've got two links with that as the link back to your website and it's actually coming from a website called leads.biz and if we look at the backlinks page so there you are you're showing up here in the directory and that's pointing back to your website so that is a backlink and then you have another anchor text embedded on that page first directory so another directory Actually, you've got two links going to two different backlinks pages. So again, you've got print medics showing up in one directory and it's here and it's pointing back to your website. And that's a link too as well. And that points back to your website, to your home page. And in this case, we've got another one here. So somewhere down here, you have a link or a backlink as it's commonly referred to pointing back to your website. Now, based on what I've seen so far, my suggestion is to go to a free tool to do some research and find out the keyword phrases that people would be searching on to look for your business. So typically people are looking for a solution to their problem, whether they're looking to buy a new printer or they're looking to get repairs for an existing printer that they have. So what I would suggest is to go to the Google Keyword Tool and all you have to do is type in Keyword Tool. Let's type in Google Keyword Tool. Go here. And so let's start typing a very, very basic word. Let's say printer and then type in the little code there. Now it's going to give me all kinds of results for printer. Now the reason why I suggest using a base word is that if you try to guess what people are searching for by putting in wireless printer, laser printer, you could be shooting in the dark. So let the program itself come back with all of the keywords that have the word printer in them and it'll give you all of the words that have that that are being searched on. So what this tool does, it gives you back all of the keywords with the word printers in them and variations on that and it'll tell you the degree of competition and also the global number of searches around the world so that is the globally around the world the local monthly searches which is in this case the United States which we selected here which is selected by default you could always change up to something else so what you want to do is to grab those keyword phrases and download them so now what we want to do is to save all those keyword phrases into a spreadsheet because we're going to be sorting them in a certain way and I'll show you why we do that in a minute. So let's all results. So I'll save that into a CSV for Excel and then we'll go to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so now we have the keywords in an Excel spreadsheet. I want to, depending on which one you want to keep, I'm going to keep the global monthly searches. So I'll delete that column. 
and I'll delete that column. So I just want to keep the competition and the keywords. Now what I want to do is I want to filter that by keywords. So in ascending order. And what I'm looking for is clusters of keywords that have the word printer in them. Look at it in this case. We've got a whole cluster of keywords here which are which seem to be very popular. Samsung color laser printer, Samsung laser printer, Samsung printer, Samsung. What we could do is that you could develop a page for Samsung printers and then you would use these individual keyword phrases as anchor text in articles that you distribute to other webmasters and then the webmaster would have the link on their website pointing back to your Samsung color laser printer website. Exactly what you want to do is you want to select keyword clusters that would be of interest to you. Look at in this case we've got a lot of wireless laser printers. So you could develop a page on wireless printers. Now the other thing we could do is that look at the individual pages on your website and go and get keyword phrases just like we did for the laser printer one and we could use toners as the keyword phrase within the Google keyword tool and then let it bring back all of the keyword phrases for toners. You, next you could do the same thing for stationary, stationary sales, repairs, laser printer repairs, design jet repairs. Look for those keyword phrases in that free tool and then export them into Excel. For each keyword cluster then you would have a set of keyword phrases that you could use. So for instance let's say you had wireless laser printers as a keyword phrase. You would write an article and include that keyword phrase in that article and have that phrase linked back to the laser printer page and give that article to a webmaster somewhere else who has a good website related to your website but don't go to the competition but go to a website and a webmaster that has a website that is somewhat relevant to your own because the relationship between your website and the website where your article will reside is very very important because Google looks at the relevance between the two websites. You just can't send an article to an unrelated website, let's say to a piano website or music website. But in your case, you could probably go to an office equipment website and offer them an article that links back to your, your website. And that is the gist of doing the backlinks. Once you've done the backlinks using those keyword phrases, then what you wanna do is the page is gonna be linked on your website you want to ensure that the main article within your website, let's say for instance, we take a laser printer repairs website. So let's say you've developed a lot of backlinks using laser printers in them, pointing back to this page. Then you want to make sure you have laser printer in your title tag, which is here, laser printer repairs. So you've got laser printer in there, which is fine. You just got the additional word late repairs which is okay but you want to make sure in the first paragraph particularly in the first sentence you want to have the word laser printer in there and depending on the length of your page in this case it's a short text I would only use it once or twice and then put the laser printer keyword phrase in the last sentence or the last paragraph of that text if you had more than let's say 800 to 1000 words and then you might be able to add your laser printer text you might be able to add your laser printer word phrase in the middle of the text so you have it once at the very beginning once in the middle and once at the end for any text longer than 800 or 1000 words you also want to this is the h1 tag here you also want to include laser printer in that text use it only once now people tend to say well should I have that into my description tag and my meta tags my keyword tags and I would put it in the description but I would definitely not put it into the keyword meta tag and the keyword meta tag in this case is over in this area underneath the head so you got the keywords here you've got laser printer in here now Google doesn't use this anymore. 
these keywords here it used to be used in the past but they don't use it anymore i have a tendency to build websites and i don't add the keyword meta tag i actually eliminate that because the only thing it does it just it just provides some information to my competitors in terms of the keywords that i'm targeting so now we've done the on page stuff i like the fact they put the graphics down here and not at the beginning and we'll touch on that because it is a panda update and it has everything to do with a quality score you get under panda Panda was an update in the Google algorithm that happened some months ago. It's been in the works for about a year and millions and millions of websites lost all of their rankings and their business because of the Panda update. And we'll touch on that as well. So now we touched on the backlinks. We touched on the on-page SEO. And now what I'd like to do is focus in on your home page and the, the way it looks. So from the point of view of the way it looks is there's a lot of text here. People will have a tendency not to read text. You have to understand that when people are searching on the internet, they go to Google, they click on your link, they come to your website, they see a lot of text, they want to find a solution to their problem, and they want to find it fast. So if you're not offering something as a solution, and particularly in your headline and your subheadlines, more than likely they're going to hit the back button here, go back to the search results, and go to the next person. So what you want to do is to try to think of what exactly people are looking for and provide that service and provide that answer to them very quickly and by having it in your headline in terms of what they're looking for. And it's, of course, you match your keywords with what the people are looking for. So if you have a keyword phrase, let's say laser printer repairs, and then they come to your laser printer repairs page, because they're gonna land on this page because you've got a high ranking in Google. You wanna have something about laser printer repairs or quick repairs or something of that nature. Put a benefit in your within your headline too as well. And then talk about the repair. You'll want to have subheadlines because people don't read, they actually scan until something catches their eye. And when something catches their eye, then they'll begin to read and they might read throughout. So it's really important to have images in here like you have here. Uh, your home page, I would add more images closer to the beginning here because we don't see anything below the fold, which is the fold down here. We actually have to scroll down to see something because you've got a lot of text. So I would try to break it up. I wouldn't put any images right at the beginning here, but more floating on the right hand side. Uh, and the reason being that's a panda thing and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So break up your text, add a lot more space, break up your sentences. You should not have more than two sentences per paragraph. There's a lot of text here, so people are gonna shy away from that. As I mentioned just a, a moment ago, Panda is all about the quality of your website. What kind of experience are people having when they come to visit your website? And Google's actually checking that out now. It's actually watching for certain signals amongst your website. And one of those signals is what I call the bounce rate. And essentially what that is, is how many people are coming to your web page, your home page, or any other landing page. And the landing page is somebody who clicks on a link in the search results and comes to a specific page on your website. So how many people are coming to a landing page and they only visit that page and then they leave. A lot of sites were designed in the past that way where you'd put in a, a very long keyword phrase, let's say a specific printer model with the model number and everything, and they're looking at that one printer to get the features on it, then they would leave. That used to be good way back years ago up until about a year ago, and then when Panda came around, the a lot of the websites that had those type of st structure and strategy lost a lot of their rankings so what google is looking at now is how many people actually come to a page your landing page and actually continue within your website and looking at other pages as well that is a signal to google indicating the quality of your website and it's a big signal uh, under panda so under panda what I, you want to do is to include links throughout your pages that point to other pages within your website. What you're trying to do is to persuade and induce people who come to a landing page to look at other pages on your website. That'll reduce your bounce rate. So the bounce rate really is the ratio of the pages visited 
and bounce the way going back to the search results versus the total number of pages visited on your website. So if you can lower your bounce rate to less than 55%, that's where the magic happens in terms of maintaining your rankings in Google and even getting favored rankings in Google because Google will look at the bounce rate and say, hmm, site-wide, he's got less than 55% bounce rate. That means this must be a high-quality website. So the bounce rate, including your SEO on page, your backlinks, all play together in order to drive the rankings and the traffic to your website. How do we figure out what our bounce rate is for our website? And it's very simple. You can go to a free tool that's called Google Analytics. And if you have that installed on your website, there's a little script that you can install on your website on each page that you want to monitor. And you log in to your analytics account, or you can create an account at Google Analytics. And then what you want to do, once you've got that set up, after a few days, go back into Google Analytics, sign back in, and look at the site content, click on that, and then click on landing pages. And within there, you'll see the bounce rate for each individual pages on your website. And what you want to do is try to reduce the bounce rate on each individual on your major pages and reduce that to below 55%. And also, if you look at the overview of your website within Google Analytics, it'll actually give you the bounce rate side-wide as well. So that's how you get the bounce rate for your website. The other thing too is that you want to watch out. In the past, I used to have photos right at the very, very beginning, just below the heading tag or the H1 tag as it's called, and then have a photo there and then the text. And what is happening now under Panda is that Google looks at that image and thinks maybe it's a banner ad, it's advertising, and then so you lose some of your quality score. So Panda is all about having a quality score and they look at the bounce rate they look at other signals including where your images are do you have advertising on your website where the advertising are placed and they give you a quality score and the quality score multiplied by your SEO score will give you the, your overall SEO ranking score and that'll determine your overall ranking in the search engines in the days past you used to put Google AdSense advertising on the right hand side sometimes at the top and now it's suggested not to put them at all. If you do want to put them, then I would suggest in, in the middle of the text or at the bottom of the text, but certainly not at the top. A lot of people used to put it right on the left-hand side, hoping to get clicks on the advertising because it's the first thing that people would see when they came to their website. And that is a big penalty score under Panda. If you're going to have images again, please keep it in the middle of the text or over to the right-hand side of your text. And that is the essence of the site review for printermedics.co.uk. Hope that helps you. If you have any questions, you can always ask questions in the discussion area. And uh, good luck with the website.